All right, let's go ahead and take a look at some things related to matrices. So here is the matrix A. So if I type that in, I have A is a matrix that consists of three rows and five columns. And you can see how it was constructed. It was constructed by placing each row and then putting a semicolon to separate rows. This colon here, this colon notation, easily creates vectors for us. So one colon five says start at one and go to five in increments of one. So that's just kind of shorthand for creating these vectors. You could have easily just typed in the vector if we wanted to here, one, two, three, four, five, and that would have given us the exact same answer. So we could have just typed these in, just using the colon notation to save some, save some typing. So this is the matrix A. There are other commands that we can use to initialize vectors. One of them is the zeros. So the zeros function lets you create arbitrarily sized vectors or matrices. So here I called it with the arguments five comma four to create a five row, four column matrix that I call matrix B. And sometimes it's just nice to initialize everything to the same value. There's also a similar command called ones. So if we come back here, the ones obviously gives us an all ones matrix, and this time I made it a three by two. One thing I like to do sometimes is use the NAN command. So NAN stands for not a number. So sometimes I like to initialize vectors or arrays or other quantities to a matrix or quantity that's full of NANs, not a number. This gets the matrix and the, the size that I want, perhaps. And then maybe I would do computations to fill in each one of these elements. Then when I'm done, if there are any not numbers left, I know I've messed something up, I might have missed one. If you initialize it all to zeros or all the ones, you might skip over one. And then when you come back, the fact that there's a zero or a one there, maybe when you computed it, that value, it was a zero or a one. So these are kind of good placeholders that shouldn't be there when you're done performing the computations that you need to compute. So it's just kind of a good little trick sometimes to use. MATLAB does have the concept of infinity, believe it or not. So you could in initialize a matrix to be the infinity matrix. So I initialize these all to be infinity. So sometimes that's useful if you want to set something very high and then reduce it later. We can create random matrices. So this is going to be a matrix that is five by five, so five columns, five rows, and the RAND command generates numbers uniformly between zero and one. So every entry here is a random number with a minimum value of zero and a maximum value of one. So if you look at them, they are indeed all between zero and one. Some are pretty large, 0.95. Some are pretty small, 0.03. But we can create random matrices of any dimension. We can create a random vector too if we want, obviously. The RAND command is useful. Another special matrix type is what's called the identity matrix. So the I command lets us easily construct identity matrices. Identity matrices are square matrices, so they have the same number of rows as they do columns. And they're zero everywhere except on the diagonal where they are equal to one. So the I command lets us create these square matrices with ones down the diagonal and zeros everywhere very easily. So let's do this. So some other useful matrix commands. Here's the matrix R that we had just a minute ago. And then I created a variable T called the diag of R. So what this does is it grabs the diagonal elements of R. So the diagonal elements are this, this, just everything down the diagonal. So I put them in this vector T. And this is just an example of one of the many built-in MATLAB functions there are to work with matrices. So if you're needing to do some kind of very common matrix operation, one of which is finding the diagonal terms, MATLAB often has a pre-built function for you to use. You don't have to go create everything from scratch. And then finally, just like with vectors, we can stack up, oh, I forgot to do that one. We can stack up matrices. So D was an old nouns matrix. E was an infinity matrix. This was three by two. 
This is two by three, so we can actually stack those up. We can put the D matrix here and the E matrix here. So similar to how we could construct vectors whose elements consisted of different pieces or even computations, we can do the same thing here where we can construct matrices whose elements actually might contain computations, something like that. So we can piece all these together as we wish. Some other matrix operations you might want to be aware of, and for this we'll go ahead and generate this random complex matrix. So here is, well, let's do it this way. Let's do three and three. So let's create this matrix here. Let's just call it T. So there's a matrix T, and it's complex. Each entry is a complex number. The transpose operation in MATLAB is very easy. It's a dot tick. So what this does is this flips it from a three row by five column matrix to a five row by three column matrix. And you can notice though, one thing I did here when I took the transpose is I did a dot tick. And then everything happened just like I thought it should. This element came here, and this element came here, and this element came down here, etc. So all the rows and columns have flipped, so to speak. You have to be careful when you're working with complex data, not tick and tick are very different things. Tick is a complex conjugate transpose. So you notice here when I did the tick, my original entry in my T matrix here was plus 0.7914. It has changed to minus 0.7914. So just be careful when you're taking the transpose. If you're working with complex data, this operation and this operation are very different. This is just a normal transpose operation. This takes the transpose and simultaneously takes the complex conjugate, meaning all the j's turn to minus j's and all the minus j's turn to j's. Okay, so just be careful with that when you're working with complex data. The complex conjugate transpose is a very common matrix operation. You often want to do that when you're working with complex data but just be aware that there are two very subtly different operations that do something similar but different. One is a complex conjugate transpose, one is a what I call a normal transpose.